Hey, what's up guys? Ricky here. Just going to do my quick recap and review of Arrow. This is season six, episode five. Tell the episode, kiss, kiss, breach, breach. Um, I love Tuesdays. Tuesdays are my favorite day of the week. I get Flash and I get Arrow. Awesome. Okay, so this episode was good. I was kind of worried because Flash uh, or Barry and Iris decided to go on vacation, which to be honest, yeah. If you know you're going to die in like two or three months, you know, you would want to enjoy being around your wife as much as humanly possible and take a two day vacation. And with very super speed, they were able to, you know, travel. I think they said like 15 beaches in 24 hours. So that was cool. But Barry leaves for two days, two days. And then you see all the hijinks that ensue. So, okay. Breaking it down character by character. Uh, we get Cisco and his girlfriend, uh, Camila that are dealing with uh cisco sleepwalking and he doesn't figure he doesn't know what he's doing and he's worried about his sleepwalking uh breach what's his no josh i whatever it's a uh, danny trejo danny trejo's character right machete uh he comes in and interrupts him in the bedroom they weren't doing anything in the bedroom by the way which is good um so he, he pops into the bedroom and uh, tells uh, Cisco that Cynthia died and wants him to look into the murder uh, on what happened. He ends up talking to him about breach psychosis. <sighs> Whatever. They end up doing some weird... Uh, there's so much like weird meta... Not, not meta like fourth wall breaking, but like... Like metahuman science, weird CW superhero science that goes on in this TV show that it's hard for me to keep track of like how things are happening. He pretty much puts himself into an MRI and has to hold on to Danny Trejos' hand with his little white noise maker Wi-Fi thing so they can create some sort of breach type i don't know like i said they explained it in the show and when they explained the show i'm like uh-huh 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 but then when i look back on it, i'm like i don't even know how that made sense doesn't matter it worked so they they see like quick flashes of what happened cisco ends up seeing that he's the one that did it ends up finding out that an evil version of himself had been uh you know been running from the law i think they're called like the collectors or whatever so he's been running from the collectors Cynthia ends up cornering him on Earth-19 and she dies there, but she knows that Cisco is going to save her. So, you know, Cisco saves the day, ends up telling his girlfriend that he loves her. Camila, super cute. Cisco, how do you do it to find these girls? Just, Camila, man. You know, I, I was a little on the fence about her when they introduced her character, but she's so cute. Oh, man. I'm, I'm happy for them. That's good. Awesome. Cool. All right. So while that's going on, we got uh, Ralph, who's supposed to be helping uh, Frost with Dr. Ramsey. And man, between what's going on with Crisis and the Monitor, right? And between what was going on just in this episode with, um, you know, with the collectors on Earth-19 and all that stuff. I, I just didn't care anything about Dr. Ramsey. Like, it, he was a character I was really hyped up for at the beginning. And it's just, with everything that's been going on, I just, you know... It was kind of a low point for me when he came into the episode. But uh, Caitlin uh, is looking for him. She ends up going back, or Frost goes looking for him, ends up going back down to like Caitlin mode, which I was glad to have Caitlin back because it's been a long time since I've seen her. And I love Dana Panabaker when she's playing that character. I, I really, it always bothered me before whenever she would turn evil. Um, I never, I, I know she's supposed to be Killer Frost, but I never really wanted her to go full evil because I just, I love her when she's just really nice, sweet Caitlyn. So seeing her back, trying to talk Ramsey off the ledge, that didn't work. That guy's freaking gone. He's over there. Looked like he had like the Venom symbiote coming out of the middle of his hand. So that, that guy's done. And his interest to me as a character is starting to dwindle. It, it, it's starting to dwindle at an alarming rate. Is what I can say. And I think it's okay because they're not making him the only focal point. They're also having like those regular like villain of the week type of things to, you know, keep my attention. So that's good. So Caitlin's dealing with that. Um, 
we also have Joe and Nash Wells. Uh, Nash is, they were both there. They, as the episode is going, they're like right at the doorstep of where Nash had like triangulated where the monitor's hideout was. So, you know, they, Nash ends up creating this explosion. The tunnel collapses and it becomes a, it becomes like a, a fight between ideologies. With Nash, you have somebody who, you know, he, he's like an Indiana Jones type. Like Indiana Jones was famous for not ever having the same love interest in every single movie. Kind of like uh, 007 or whatever. Like he's a loner by nature. And Joe is, Matt, he had like an anecdote about when he had just been divorced and he had Iris and he was just distraught and he was trying to find faith in the church and he, he didn't even have the strength to like cook food and he, um, you know, his neighbors all get together and they end up bringing him food and he ends up finding out that if you have faith in nothing else, you at least need to have faith in people. And then his faith ends up being rewarded at the end of the episode when he ends up just just for that just for that split second was long enough to keep Nash from ex collapsing the entire tunnel with that last explosion. And then you see Ralph, you know, shimming through that little opening that he had made because he found Joe, which was good. It was great. This is how you do side characters, character development. Batwoman could learn so much. From this this is it was perfect it was I didn't even miss Barry I'm not saying I want him to die you can't have the flash without the flash and Lord knows I don't want to bring back freaking Nora from the future so glad she's gone damn she was annoying okay anyway getting off on the tangent again but what I was saying was this it was perfect all I I'm so attached to all of these side characters that when they have to you know pick up the brunt of the weight of the episode on their shoulders, I feel like they carried it perfectly. So it was good. There was a scene, it, it just, you know, side note, right? Sidebar. There was a scene at close to the beginning of the episode when, when Cisco is uh, sleepwalking and he goes up in the nightstand and he's about to cut his hair. I was like, just do it, man. Just do it, Cisco. Your hair's too long, bro. Bro, bro, you got ponytail hair, bro. You gotta, you know, trim it. I'm not saying all of it. I'm not saying keep it high and tight. Just, you know, take, you know, take, take the, you know, the, just take a little off the bottom. You know what I mean? Two, three inches. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you, man. But, um, you know, that it was that I, I love all of these characters. It was a great show. Super strong episode. Uh, I already gave Supergirl an eight out of 10 this week. So I can't give it that because I honestly thought this was better than Supergirl. I'm going to go 8.5. I freaking love this episode and it's crazy because Barry wasn't in it and it very little of it actually, you know, was crisis heavy. So I, that's usually when they're talking about stuff with the crisis and the monitor, that's what gets me going the most. But man, all of it was so good and emotional for the exception of the Cynthia thing. The Cynthia relationship with Cisco, I didn't really care for Cynthia that much you know, when she was in the show. So those emotional moments kind of fell a little flat for me, but it, it was what it was. I know that he, she would have meant a lot to Cisco's character. So I'm able to, you know, I had absolutely no problems with that at all. Uh, and then at the end of the episode, that little stinger that they had was that Nash says, you know, I know how to save Barry. We're all meeting tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the tunnels. It's going down. <laughs> Next Tuesday is going to be awesome. So like I said, this is why I love Tuesdays. Great episode. If you guys like this video, please subscribe and like the video. It helps a lot. And if you want to hear any of my other CW reviews or my Watchmen impressions, feel free to watch those videos. If anything else, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.